അടുത്ത ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട പരിപാടിയിലേക്ക് കടക്കുകയാണ് ശ്രീനാരായണ ഗുരു മഹോത്സവത്തിൻ്റെ ഉദ്ഘാടനമാണ് ദിദിന സെമിനാർ ശ്രീനാരായണ ഗുരു മഹോത്സവം ഉദ്ഘാടനം ചെയ്യുന്നത് പ്രശസ്ത കവിയും നാടകൃത്തും എഴുത്തുകാരനും പ്രൊഫസറുമായ ശ്രീ എച്ച് എസ് ശിവപ്രകാശ് ആണ് കർണാടക സാഹിത്യ അക്കാദമി അവാർഡും കർണാടക സംഗീത നാടക അക്കാദമിയുടെയും അവാർഡുകളടക്കം നിരവധി പുരസ്കാരങ്ങൾ ഇദ്ദേഹത്തിന് ലഭിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ദ എമിനൻറ്റ് പോയറ്റ് പ്ലേ റൈറ്റർ റൈറ്റർ പ്രൊഫസർ ഓഫ് സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് ആർട്സ് ആൻഡ് എസ്തറ്റിക്സ് ജെ എൻ യു എഡിറ്റർ ട്രാൻസ്ലേറ്റർ ഡയറക്ടർ ടാഗോർ സെൻട്രൽ ബെർലിൻ വെൽക്കം യു സാർ ഫോർ ദ ഇനവറൽ അഡ്രസ് വെൽക്കം യു സാർ ശ്രീ എച്ച് എസ് സി ഒ പ്രകാശ് so suprabhatam for everybody as they in sanskrit namasabhya sabhapati bhaschavo namaha uh, dr shrinivasra secretary of sahitya academy has said uh, some very important things about sri narayan guru and sri raman munni gave a wonderful resounding kind of speech in fact i feel like asking him to go on speaking so that i can sit silently like dakshinamurthy and go on listening to you anyway uh very happy to be here in this auspicious place auspicious because this is a temple of knowledge of saraswati books and an auspicious occasion the times when we remember and utter the name of great saints like sri narayan guru those are the moments which are auspicious in the present day inauspicious world where the world is ruled and directed by different kinds of divisive and conflictual ideologies whether it's communism or liberalism and the worldwide poison that is now being spread which is called globalization the globalization does not unite people it only unites the markets of the world not the people of the world not the hearts of the world in such a world which is moving towards greater and greater fragmentation it's a great blessings that we can remember and utter some names like basavanna sri narayan guru sri ramalinga adigal another great contemporary of sri narayan guru from tamil nadu whose inspiration an example reminds us that we all belong to one family that's what narayan guru said basavanna to whom narayan guru has been often compared said in one of his vachanas eva narava eva narava eva narava nisadara iya eva nammava eva nammava eva nammava nisaya kurun sanadi don't let me ask who is this who is this who is this make me say he is mine he is mine he is mine so time and again they have been reasserting and underlining the kinship of the whole world the con- connectedness of all world uh, this is uh, in tantras this is called sarvam sarvatmakam everything in here is in everything that kind of philosophy i am not a great expert on sri narayan guru though i have done some studies because uh, my uh, uh, one of my areas of interest for the last 30 40 years has been uh, Uh, what is called bhakti studies and the trying to understand bhakti movements of india uh, since the inception in 7th century uh, around 7th century 
uh, of, the, of the common era in Tamil Nadu and it, had, it spread to uh, uh, the rest of India. So, uh, we have the two great culminating points of bhakti tradition in South India in the 20th century. One is, of course, uh, Sri Narayan Guru, the other is Sri Ramalinga Digal. Ramalinga Digal, of course, they had different, traversed different routes. Sri Ramalinga Digal came from a traditional family, uh, Shaiva Siddhanta scholarship. He was a Gavanagar from a childhood, he was a great scholar, steeped in uh, Tevaram and also in Sanskrit. And he summed up his philosophy in a very, very simple terms in one of his poems. Vadiya Pairai Kande Nan Vadinen. When I looked at the wilting crops, I also have that. So how can I be happy when there are so many poor people, hungry people in the world? He even quarrels with Shiva. How can you let so many people suffer hunger and illness? So ultimately, Ramalinga Adigal, though he came from a devout Shaivite family, later he transcended Shaivism. He even dropped the name of Shiva. So the last slogan he gave for the world, Arut Parinjodi, Arut Parinjodi, Tan Karunai. The great light, which is also the great compassion. This is the essence of the kind of Advaita that Sri Ramadinga Adigal and Sri Narayan Guru preached and practiced, which is not, as Mundi pointed out, Shankara's Advaita. Because Shankara's Advaita denies the existence of the world. When uh, the great Advaitins of Kashmir Shaivism attack Shankara Advaita, they say this is Maya Advaita. He says the world is Maya. Then where is liberation? The world is all Maya. Liberation is Maya. And there is a, an anecdote about uh, an Advaitin Guru in Kashi. When he was giving a sermon to his disciples, in the banks of the Ganga, a drunken elephant came there and the Guru started running. And he said, Guruji said, world is Maya, why are you running away? Then he said, Gajam Mithya Palayanam Mithya. The elephant is an illusion, but running away is also an illusion. So, a certain kind of philosophy uh, which denies the existence of the material world and which defends caste system. Because in, the, in his commentary in Bhagavad Gita, Shankaracharya says, one stanza commenting, he says, the low caste man is like a poisonous insect. The poison is in his blood, he has to be treated like that. And his disciple, Madhusuna Sarasa, Madhusuna Sarasa, they wrote Bhakti uh, 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 Sahina, he also defends caste system. Whereas Abhinav Gupta, who represented the other kind of Advaya philosophy, which Narayan Guru also believed in, he said, uh, an untouchable who gets Shiva Diksha is superior to a Brahmin who does not get Shiva Diksha. So it's this kind of Advaita which unites people. There is also the kind of Advaita which divides people. And Sri Narayan Guru represented the kind of Advaita, inclusive Advaita, which leaves no one out. Not only human beings, even animals. That's why Ramalinga Digar said, Even when I see a crop built, I suffer the pain because the whole world is interconnected. The same philosophy was underlined by Mahayana Buddhism in India when Mahayana uh, philosophy declared that bodhisattva food, compassion for the world is much greater than nirvana, attaining salvation. There have been, these days there have been senseless uh, discussion about for and against Sanatana Dharma. Those who condemn Sanatana Dharma don't tell us what they are condemning. Those who praise Sanatana Dharma don't tell us what they are praising. And about religion, the Sanskrit word dharma comes from the dhatu, dharanati the dharma, that which holds people together is dharma. Now dharma is used to divide people these days. And Sanatana also, 
the first definition, definition of Sanatana Dharma was given by Lord Buddha in his uh, Dhammapada in the first chapter. Natti verena sammanti, natti verena veran sammanti sarachana, verena sammanti yesadhammo sanatana. What is Sanatana Dharma? Yes, this is the Sanatana Dharma. Through hatred, you cannot mitigate hatred. Only through non-hatred can you mitigate hatred. So this is the theme that runs through the most positive and universalist and inclusive manifestations of Indian spiritual philosophy since the time of Buddha till the time of Sri Narayan Guru. And all the great bhakti saints tried to, they, 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 those were not, not the times for uh, giving a call for caste annihilation, but they made society, you know, uh, bearable for the lower caste by creating a space where people from all castes could come together, creating a platform. That was the great achievement of Bhakti traditions. Not that they uh, were able to fight, they, they gave a call for caste annihilation. That could not happen in those days uh, where the society was, uh, you know, fragmented into uh, compartmentalized, uh, hierarchic. Uh, uh, social order. Now, though in Mahayana Buddhism, in uh, Shaivism of Kashmir, Shivadvaita of Kashmir, in the teachings of great Nayanamas in Tamil Nadu, Adivas, Shiva Sharanas of Karnataka, Varkaris of Maharashtra, Gnaneshwar, Namdev, Yeknath and Tukaram, Bhima Boy of Urissa, they were all trying to broaden and deepen spiritual philosophy to make it more and more inclusive. In uh, Sant Gnaneshwar has done a translation of the Bhagavad Gita into Marathi, it's called Naneshwari, one of the greatest uh, poems in Marathi. At the end of this work, there is a chapter called Pasayadana. He is asking for blessings for everybody and everything. And though he was a devotee of Vithal, of Pandarpur, he said, Tirtha Vithal, Kshetra Vithal, Bandhu Vithal, Sakha Vithal, Vithal Nirjana. So, Vithal was everything for him, but in Naneshwari, he was also a great Advait, and he wrote Amrutanba, which is the greatest explication of uh, uh, Advaitic experience. And in Naneshwari, at the end, he says, he prays not to the deity of any village or town. Yete Vishwatmake Deve Vagyagne Toshani Toshani Mazadave Pasayadana. After I have performed this walk, Yagna, this great poem, for not any particular deity, Pandarpur, Pandar, no, Vishwatma Ke Deve, for the Lord of the whole universe, I ask for these blessings. And what are the blessings he asks for? Let the heat of the sun be reduced, let the coolness, the moon may become some uh, warm and let writers get some sense, Sahityopaji will then get sense, sense. And the, the number of those who, saints, who's, from whose mouth piyusha, nectar flows, let increase. Let all humans and animals, all their wishes be fulfilled. If that happens, Nanadeva will be happy. So, in Maharashtra, at the conclusion, every function, this song is uh, normally, this portion is uh, recited, a magnificent piece of poetry. It is a prayer for universal welfare, you know. It's the same note that we find in Sri Ramalinga Adigal and in Sri Narayana Guru. Difference is, in Gnanadev, in the Basavanna, all the pre-20th century Bhakti saints, whose hearts also melted for the suffering of humanity, for the suffering of animals and even inanimate things. This was only the practice of a certain kind of virtue for them. 
But it's only in Ramalinga Rigal and in Sri Narayan Guru, the other is not something outside that we bless and pray for, because of the other is also part of the self. The other is constitutive of the self. This is the new dimension that Sri Ramalinga Rigal and Narayan Guru brought to Indian philosophy. So, what they did, both of them, Vivekananda sometimes spoke like this, but that was not the major theme in his philosophy. Ramakrishna also embodied this kind of compassion, compassion but nowhere were they so clearly and eloquently expressed as in the Advaitin teachings of Sri Ramalinga Digal and Sri Narayanika. With that, they provided a panacea for the modern world. What's the problem with the modern world? There were many modern philosophies who tried to unite the world, but they have succeeded more in dividing the world than uniting the world. Marxism tried to bring together the proletarians of the whole world, but Marxist movement itself became divided. And liberalism tried to bring in the welfare of everybody, but liberalism has almost become outdated. It has now led to the uh, emergence, what can be called the, the multinational corporate capitalism, where Karl Marx has said one day, the uh, state will wither away, so that uh, uh, the, 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 no, no need for any state. So it will be proletarian rule. But today the state has withered away, not in the way Karl Marx predicted, but in the way state has withered, withered away, so that it has paved the way for the unquestioned uh, rule of multinational corporations. So this is the biggest set of the world. As I said, multi-globalization can unite the markets of the world. Even that, it doesn't suck they'll be fighting with each other. It follows the law of what Karl Marx called the vicious cycle of capitalism. Uh, so, it cannot unite us. So, the dream that came from capitalism and Marxism, etc., uniting the whole world together, as a response to the the different parts of the world coming together in the post 18th century, that dream could not be fulfilled by the Judo-Christian ideologies of Marxism and capitalism, but the people who gave the seeds for the fulfillment of this kind of unification were great saints like Bhima Boy, Sri Narayan Guru and Ramalinga Digad. So this was his contribution to the bhakti tradition. He extended the scope of bhakti tradition. He extended the scope of Advaita by making Advaita relevant to everybody, not just to uh, somebody who had attained Brahma Jnana and uh, because all the rest was thought to be Maya. Because this Maya philosophy made us very callous. We became very, very insensitive to the sufferings of others. You can see this in the traits of Indians even today. You go to any public toilet in India, is the worst maintained in the world. Because people after they use the toilet, they forget that other people have to use it, they don't even flush it. Why is this such insensitiveness? And look at our temples, how dirtily they are maintained. Because this kind of Maya Vada has led us on to become very insensitive and uh, to uh, impervious to the sufferings of others. And Narayan Guru and Sri Ramanandigal gave a panacea to overcome this ill and, and, they, and they lived this philosophy during their lifetime. And they did not let themselves be confined to any narrow sect or any narrow school of thought. They went beyond everything. That's why in the temples that Ramani and Radigal uh, set up towards the end of his life was only this jyoti, this lamp showing light. 
Arut Perinjoti, Tanip Perinkaranai. Narayan Guru also evolved towards the end of his life and he was so great. Once the, this uh, association of Iravad that he uh, set up uh, showed uh, signs of becoming casteist, he left it, he resigned from it. Because he didn't want to be cooped up in any narrow definition. So, this is the great example that was set to us by two greatest saints I know of the 20th century, Sri Ramalinga Adigal and Sri Narayan Guru. Let's go down to their uh, sacred memory. Let's bring, and they're not the preserve of any caste, a community, a region. They're for the whole world. Because when Buddha preached his Dhamma, he told his disciples, go to the south, go to the north, go to the west and go to the east. Preach Dhamma to everybody in his own dialect. Because the Dhamma belongs to everybody. It's not anybody's property. It's not a property in any caste or community in a particular region. So, the panacea that uh, these great saints have given us, and we are blessed that they were born in our part of the world, in South India, uh, like Buddha said, let it go to the west, let it go to the east, let it go to the north, let it go to the south, let it spread everywhere, because this is what Santagnandev called Vishwa Sadharma Surya. He says, I pray, pray to that Vishwa Sadharma, this is the true Dharma. There are many gurus who call them Sadguru, Sadharma, etc. They are not talking about them. But Vishwa Sadharma Surya, like the sun who, uh, who uh, radiates all over the world, who brightens up the whole world. Dhamma is like that. So that's this dharma, inclusive dharma, compassionate dharma, go everywhere and transform people's hearts and souls. And the process was already initiated by these great saints. Now we are reminding ourselves of that and this process renew itself and spread further and further and wider and wider. When I think of uh, Sri Narayan Guru, there is a Shloka that Swami Vivekananda wrote for uh, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Advaya tattva samahita chittam projvala bhakti pataruta ruttam. So his heart is an Advaita, but bhakti uses to light up this Advaita. So uh, Sri Narayan Guru also did that. So thank you very much and stop here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inaugurating Sri Narayana Guru Mahal Thank you Sri Achas Shiva Prakash.